Have you ever been encountered with a situation where you need to protect your application from rooted devices, devices with unblocked bootloader, emulators, or devices with any form of compromisation which you think may have been done by an attacker or someone else? Then the Safety Net Attestation API is for you. The Safety Net Attestation API has been brought up by Google to help developers to assess the integrity of devices running your application. This is done by examining both the software and hardware environment and comparing it with the reference data provided for Android devices. This API should be used as part of the anti-abuse detection system in your application. This API is very very useful and in today in this video I want to share with you the features of this API and how do you use it in an application. So in this video we will talk about this API, all the features and everything possible and in the next video we will see how to effectively use this API in your application, right? So this API should not be used as the standalone anti-abuse security in your in your application. This should be used alongside uh, other features like the DRAM checks and this API should not be used just to check a particular feature like uh, to check if your application to check if the device running your application is rooted. So the, this API has, has not been conceived for that. It's, it's actually conceived to check the integrity of the device running your application. And for that reason, let's see how the API works, right? So this is how the API works. The first step is to call the API, to, to call the safety net client in your application and when you do that, the safety net client connects to the Google backend and, the, and pass some data to the Google servers. So the Google server uses this data and check and assess the data to find out if this device is genuine or not. So this, the Google API, um, the Google backend assess the data and send back the result to the safety net client. And the safety net client then passes this data back to your application. And what what you have to do is that you have to pass this data to your server to test if this data is uh, actually genuine or not. Because Google thinks that uh, someone may give you actually wrong data, and you may use this wrong data and see if it was coming from Google. No, so you have to send this data to your server and do the verification on your server. That is test in your server if the data sent is actually from the safety net attestation backend all right and now send the results back to your client so that is that is it it may look complicated but it's actually very simple to use so how do we use uh, the api the first thing to use the api is that you have to request for a an api key you can do that by going to the google um, api console i will show you that in the next video but uh, since we're just seeing the features of the API, we can skip this step and move to the next step, right? So one thing you have to pay attention is that this API is limited to 10,000 requests per project, right? So the default quota for your application when you start using this API is 10,000 requests per day for your project. That means if more than 10,000 requests per day is done uh, in your project, that is in your application, there above 10,000 you will just receive errors if you want more if you want a higher quota you can fill this form right here and request from an increased quota from Google but this is this actually should be done by really big applications because I think you can actually limit the number of requests you do uh, from this API by just allowing this API to be called just once in your application by so doing I think uh, you can do you can just allow this API to be called to be called in the first launch of your application that is after the user have installed your application and uses your application for the first time then you can request then you can request to check the integrity of this device and and then save the result maybe in the shared preferences so that in the next launch of your application you can just use the results to know if you have to allow the user to continue using your application or if you have to stop your application and prevent the user from using it or not and so i think you can limit uh, the number of requests by just allowing your application to call the api just in the initial launch 
of your application that is the first time the user launches your application after installing and uh, so one thing you have to note is that even if google increases the daily quota of your application each sessions of your application is limited to a maximum of five requests per minute so more than five requests per minute you will return an error also so you have to put that in mind so that is it and one thing also very important is that this application needs google play services to work i think this should not be an issue because google play is already available in majority of android devices and i think uh, just with some few exceptions where you cannot find the google play but i think most of the devices have google play so if you are if your if your if the device running your application has google play then you can make use of this api in uh, in your application so that is it once you can test if google play is available and if it's available then you can request you can do an api call so one thing i want to talk about is here so when when you do a request to google uh, servers to check if the, the device is a genuine to check the integrity of the device then the google server return a result returns a result back to the api client um, from the from this result from this response we can get a json web signature object and this json web signature object now should be sent to your server to check if this uh, object is from the google uh, backend or not so before using the data in this object you need to check if if this object is for google server and in the next video i will show actually show you how do we do that right so uh so if you decode the the object you have this information the json the json web signature object so after testing and verifying that uh this object is from the google servers then you can exploit the the data in this object and after decoding the object the data comes in this way you have the timestamp you have the nonce you have the apk package name and this all information timestamp is just a time when um, the time when your application have launched have done the request to the google to the google servers to check the integrity the nonce is a is a value generated by your application when the client is doing a request to google server and the apk package name is your application package name which we should also use to test if um, if uh, the request is done from your from your application you also have the apk certificate which is a base 64 encoded value of the certificate used to sign your application now the cts profile match that is the compatibility test suite profile match is actually a very important parameter in this in this data and the basic integrity so these two values are actually very important because these are the two values we use to determine if the device running your application is genuine or not the cts profile match is a more strict version and the basic integrity is a linear linear version right and the evaluation type actually tells us if the evaluation was basic or if the evaluation was more was a hardware if the evaluation uses the hardware properties to evaluate we would see that in the next session so let's see i want us to talk more about the the cts profile match and the integrity and the basic integrity properties as you as i said earlier the cts profile match is a stricter verdict of the device integrity right so for you to have this cts profile match uh, to have a true value for this property this device must have this device must have passed the android uh, compatibility test suite right whereas the basic integrity can be true even if the device has not passed a, a compatibility test suite but if we test that your device has not been tem have not been tempered with then uh, everything should be okay so this table down here gives us a more a more detailed explanation of when you have to use the basic integrity property or and when you have to use the cts profile match it, it determines it, it all depends on uh, which kind of uh, which kind of integrity you want in the in the device running your application the cts uh, profile match is true when the when your device has passed the 
when your device has passed the compatibility test suite you can see it here the compatibility test suite you can come to this page to have more information about the compatibility test suite it's actually something done by google to done by google for various manufacturers to test the integrity of their various devices so in this table you can find out that the cts is only true when your device has passed and uh, the cts the compatibility test suite and is false for the rest of uh, the rest of the cases so it's false if the device has an unblocked bootloader it's false if this if this device has its custom rom it's false if uh, if the manufacturer have not applied for it for the certification and it's false for emulators whereas the basic integrity is true in some cases like for example here if the device has an unblocked bootloader the basic integrity is still true if uh, the device is from a manufacturer or uh, let's say not recognized it's still true if it's from it is for a device with a with a rooted um, with a custom rom let's say custom rom not rooted it's still true so it's only false when the device an emulator or if the device is uh, or if it's or uh, if the request is from a script or if the device is rooted for example then it, then the basic integrity become false i actually advise uh, developers to use the cts perform match i think it is a more reliable uh, value is a more reliable property to check the integrity of devices running your application uh, so you may have some error cases where maybe the device does not, does not have internet connectivity or institutions where your the where your application has done more than five requests in less in a minute then you have errors or where the attacker uh, intentionally triggers an error that's why you can have an error so what i usually recommend to developers is that in the initial launch of your application you can do a request to check the integrity of the device running your application and once you have confirmed the integrity of this device you can save a property in the shared preferences we should be able to say that the device is genuine or not so in the second launch of your application you just check for this property to see if the device has been checked or not so if this property is existing in the shared preferences then the device integrity has already been checked and you just test the value of this property for example if it's true that means the device is genuine and you can continue running your application and if it's false that means the device is not genuine then you can shut down your application and if this value does not exist in your shared preferences that means for example that uh, you have not checked uh, the integrity of the device and now and now from there you can now uh, request uh the safety net to check the integrity of this device right i think such a mechanism will be helpful uh, and will avoid you to launch many requests which are not necessary and will just allow you to test your application in a particular device just once now one thing i want us to talk about also is the evaluation type the evaluation type is a property which is which is present when the cts profile match or the basic integrity verdicts are present so if if any of this property is present then the evaluation type will also be present so this evaluation type gives you uh how the test has been done if the test was just basic or if was if or if it was hardware backed but this um, property should only be used when you want the highest level of integrity for 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 the device running your application but i think this will be used maybe in really rare cases right because uh uh because i think once you use the cts profile match to test the integrity of the device you don't need you don't need again the evaluation uh, type unless you really want a highest level of integrity of integrity possible then you can use the evaluation type so that is it guys i think i will share the link in the description below and you can come back to this uh, to this page and read through the safety net attestation api to have more information about it and in the next video we will see how to effectively use 
the safety net attestation client and how do we uh, uh, test the response from the client to make sure that this response is from uh, the safety net right so check out the next video and let's see how to effectively use this api